Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner. In today's edition, I want to cover Primoz Roglic, the Bora Hansgro rider. Now, he just left Visma Lisa bike last year. Now he's over here on Bora Hansgro, and he is the last of the four big favorites, Tade Bogacar, Jonas Vingo, Rimko Evenpool, and Primoz Roglic, that are going to be battling against each other at this year's July 2024 Tour de France. So this was his first race for Primoz Roglic here at Paris Nice. How did he do, and what does it look like going further? A lot of people could be worried here after this year's Perry Nice finished and wrapped up after Stage 8 because Primoz Rogoc got dropped on Stage 8 and, of course, lost time just finishing inside the top 10 of the general classification, but about four minutes back on Stage 8 when it's all said and done. So how much do we have to worry? Well, before we get into worrying about Perry Nice, if you're going into the Tour de France and your Primoz Rogoc, what are the main things that you have to focus on? You have to focus on your team. It has to be solid throughout the three weeks of racing in July. You have to focus on yourself. Your power numbers have to be the best that you've ever seen in 2024 July because we know Jonas, Tadej Pogacar, Remco Evnipol, when you have three riders, at least one of those, if not all three, are going to be producing their best numbers in July. The chances that three riders aren't going to be at their best numbers is really unlikely. So Primoz Rogerts has to be focused on himself and his power numbers have to be the best. His team has to be organized. His riders have to be at the best form that they can possibly be in. Or there's going to be problems once we get into July. Because if you're underproducing power in July, there's no chance you're going to win when there's four favorites. If there's only two favorites, there's a good chance that one doesn't perform 100%, then you can possibly win. Such as what we saw here at Perry Nice with Rem Koevnipol. He came in, and I'm sure if you looked at his power numbers, it's not the best numbers that the Belgium kids ever produced. So for that example, when we look at Perry Nice, and you're only going against one of the favorites, their number can be down, and that's what we saw from Rem Koevnipol. Now, when we look at everything as a whole throughout the stages of Primoz Roglic, he looked good on stage one. He looked fantastic on stage three, but his team did not. And that's what he has to be concerned with is the management and his team. That's all one bundle because the management picks the team that's around him. When he started Perry Nice here, he's missing some climbers. When I look at the roster of seven, Primoz Roglic, of course, is the leader. Alexander Vlasov's his first lieutenant. But then the next climber that they have is Sobrero. Sobrero, I have seen climb at the front of the group sometimes, but not consistently always there. So I wouldn't put him as a for sure climber. And when we look at the rest of the guys, Bob Youngles is kind of a lot like Sobrero, where he's gone top 10 at the Giro and stuff before, but he's not always a guaranteed climber. And more often than not, he's not a climber. The other guys, Van Poppel's a sprinter, Nico Dins is a hard roller, and then of course Marco Haller is a solid guy for rolling and a good lead out man for a rider like Danny Van Poppel for the sprints, but he's not a climber. So Bora Hansgrohe with seven riders, they only left Vlasov here to look after Primoz Roglic that you could be for sure would be there at the finish of the stages of Perry Nice. I don't think the management brought in a great team, especially when you look over at Trino Adriatico where Jai Henley's riding over there. Leonard Kamna's over there. So you're missing a bunch of power that you could have brought over here at Perry Nice because even Danny Martinez, who won in Algarve, didn't come to Perry Nice. So the team let him down there, and then we're going to deal with the fact that Primoz Roglic's power numbers clearly aren't at the best we've ever seen from the Slovenian. Okay, he survived in stage one, missed the split on one of the first time bonus uphill climbs to Rimko Avnipol, but then stayed on his wheel going up the next climb. Like I said, stage three, the team time trial, he was actually spectacular there with only two teammates going with him with Vlasov and Sobrero doing the pulls from basically the first time check all the way to the finish of stage three team time trial. Stage four, he put his team on the front, but they didn't ride the front the whole time, so the team kind of failed. And then, of course, Rimko Evnipol still finished with Rimko Evnipol. We go into stage six, and he lights it up with 30 kilometers to go. It looks like almost the old Primoz Rogue, which is coming back. But once you see Santiago Butrago bridge across to him after Brandon McNulty drops off, you got to ask yourself, how did Santiago Butrago bridge up to Primoz Rogue? Okay, his power is not the same. We take it, same thing once you go into stage seven, his power doesn't look as good. Stage eight, he ends up dropping from the front group, loses four minutes. When it's all said and done, of course, we see him getting interviewed. The interviewer is asking him, what's wrong? Why aren't you there? He says, I don't have to win Perry Nice. And it's true, he doesn't. But you got to ask yourself some questions if you're Primoz Roglic. 
And the journalist should have asked him, hey, why aren't you at your best? Are you sick? Do you have an injury? If I take you back to his worst result in a stage race, you'd go back to 2022 at the Basque Country where he was the race leader on stage one and then lost the race lead after stage four. I told you on the butterfly effect that that year's Basque Country, something has to be physically wrong with Primoz Roglic to have lost so much time and lose the race leader's yellow jersey. We found out later he had a knee injury, which of course proves the point that I was trying to put together at the butterfly effect that there had to be something wrong with him. So when I look at Perry Nice, what is wrong with Primoz Roglic? Clearly his power is not there. Now I'm not worried if I'm Primoz Roglic and I finished in the top 10 in general classification here, if I know I was sick the week before, two weeks before, three weeks before, and my training's not 100%. I have nothing to worry about here at Perry Nice if I'm Primoz Roglic. If I came into Perry Nice doing everything I possibly could to be on the top form that I could have at the start of stage one of Perry Nice, and we finish here at stage eight, and I'm 10th on general, just inside the top 10 of general classification here when it's said and done, I'm worried. But when you look at the interview from Primoz Roglic, he never really answers the question. When the, when the journalist asks him, why aren't you the old Primoz Roglic is basically what he's asking. He's saying, well, everybody else is getting better. Everyone else is doing altitude training. But I would ask him the question, are your power numbers the same as what you had when you won the Vuelta? Are they the same when you won the Giro going up that, up that individual time trial on the penultimate stage? Are you the same Primoz Roglic at the top of the form? Is it power numbers that's missing? If Primoz Roglic says, hey, my power numbers weren't as good, you're correct. I'm underperforming. Then the next question I'd ask as a journalist is I would say, why aren't they? Did you come in here with your best training or were you sick? Were you injured? Is there something that we as the fans and the viewers here of Perry Nice would want to know? Is there a health issue with you? Is there an injury? Did you not come in here 100% on form? Because when you look at everything being said and done at Perry Nice, and Primoz Roglic always said in all of his interviews that it's a process, right? It is a process. He's 100% right. It's a process getting used to the team. It's a process making sure the team is functioning and riding the right tactics throughout the race. And that's what, when everything's said and done at Perry Nice, if I'm Primoz Roglic and I'm looking at it, okay, I had a reason to come in here missing 50 watts, 25 watts of power. That's easily explained because I had a cold two weeks before. I had a sore knee coming in on stage one, two, three, four, five, and six or seven. And then on stage eight, it flared up and that's why I dropped out of the front lead group there and lost time on stage eight. Then there's nothing to worry about. The only other thing you need to worry about after Perry Nice is said and done, if you're a fan of Primoz Roglic or if you're Primoz Roglic yourself, and you know there's a reason why you underperformed here at Perry Nice. The only thing you need to worry about after this year's 2024 Perry Nice is Strada Bianca with an 81 kilometer solo victory from Tade Pogacar. Are his power numbers better than we've ever seen before? And Jonas Vinigo, when he won Old Grand Camino, and then he won two mountain stages at Torino Adriatico, solo on every mountain stage he's done here in 2024, are his power numbers better? Now, Philippa York, she had an interview on Cycling News, and she said in her interview where she's basically dissecting Primoz Roglic's Perry Nice, she said that he looks a few kilos overweight. There's no way he's a few kilos overweight. A few kilos overweight is three to five. Three pounds, three, three kilos is like seven pounds. Five kilos is unreal and off the chart. There's no way he's 15 pounds overweight. So that you can 100% scratch. Philippa York is completely wrong there. Maybe a kilo, maybe a kilo and a half. But I wonder if he's actually lost weight from last season versus the start here of Perry Nice versus last season because he looked incredibly thin in every interview I had. So there's no way he's a few kilos overweight. That is not the problem. But Primoz Roglic will know the problem. He'll, he'll dissect that problem and say, hey, something happened before Perry Nice. That explains that. The only thing I need to worry about, the team did not bring a very good team here at Perry Nice. So the management I'm a bit concerned about when you go into that team time trial and four guys are dropped on a 4.5% climb that's only 2.2 kilometers to 2.3 kilometers long. I'm very worried about that if I'm Primoz Roglic, and I am very worried about Tade Pogacar and Jonas Vinigo producing better power numbers than they ever have in their career. And right now at Perry Nice, I got some work to do.
But that's the way I'm looking at it from Primos Roglic. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon.